So welcome to my latest unrehearsed video. Um, made a bit more progress with the printer. <clears throat> Before I got into that, I just want to talk about this stuff. This is a slot cover. Um, simple stuff. Just goes in to the slot like that. You can either press it in from the top or you can just slide it in from the end. Got five uses I can think of for this. Use number one is um, arguably it just looks better particularly if you've got um, access holes like I've got here so a bit of v-slot in there covers it up it's use number one use number two is if this is um, a horizontal member then you can get a lot of dust and stuff build up in there over time just looks unpleasant obviously you can't do much if you've got v-slot wheels on it um, but it's a uh, because of the shape of the slot if you do get any dust in there it's a bit awkward to get out so again a uh, bit of a slot in there and um, then you've got a nice flat surface any dust on that will just wipe off it's use number two use number three which most people probably know if you've got some wires you want to run the wires around the frame stick them in there like that the slot cover over the top holds them in place and uh, and hides, hides them as well. Use number four is if you've got a panel that you want to fit or anything that you want to fit to the frame that you might want to take off again and you're using T-nuts <coughs> then you can use slot cover to hold the T-nut where you want it to be. Um, so you can take your panel on and off um, and the T-nut will always be in the right place for the screw in the panel. Particularly useful if you've got a vertical lead and you want to fit a face your panel or something like that. Um, obviously the bottom of this needs to be butted up against something because it slides fairly freely. That'll hold the V-nut. And then finally, it comes in different colours. So if you wanted to, you can just... Um, Use it to add a bit of bling to your printer. Uh, give your printer a go faster stripe. Right, so that's that. Um, on with the printer itself. Um, I've made three changes since I did the design. So, first, <clears throat> first thing is the print head um, makes contact with the motor mounts before it makes contact with the X-min switch. So I've got these two no-go areas in each corner of the front of the bed. So I've only got 400mm travel for most of the bed in both directions. Those little corners at the front, I haven't got the full travel. So I need to avoid those corners. Um, so for example, if I'm homing X, I need to make sure that the print head is back a bit from the front. Otherwise, it will clamp the motor mount before it reaches the switch. And same in in um, in the Y direction. So particularly in the Y direction, that's going to be that's where the biggest sort of issue is. So I'd have to make sure that the print head is over to away from each corner before coming all the way forward. So there's various ways of doing that. I could home. Uh, I could set the switch so that it homes when it touches the motor mount. And then I could set that position as being, say, y equals 20 rather than y equals 0. It's one way of doing it, but I just thought, why not just home to y max? So that's what I've done. I've basically added another switch at the back, a y max switch. So I've got both y max and y min. Now I can use either. So that's one little diversion away from the original design. The other thing is because I've got about six, I can't remember what it's going to be now. It used to be 760 mil in Z, but because I've added the drawer underneath and kept the rails the same relative position, I've lost a couple hundred mil. So I'm going to have about 560 mil of travel in Z, which if I've printed something that tall, um, 
it takes a long time to home Z if you do it at normal speed. So what I like to do is home Z initially at a very fast speed to get it somewhere close within you know 50 mil and then home Z in a normal way. And the way I did that before on the other printer I had an extra um, micro switch on a swinging arm. So <clears throat> the bed would come up, touch the micro switch, that would be the initial position and then I would home normally using the Z end stop, the, the nozzle from there. So um, after it's triggered the switch then the arm would pivot so the bed could continue going up without crushing anything. Um, but I just thought on this build it would be easier to use a, uh, a slotted opto switch instead. So that's the plan. So I'll do a very a fast home at high speed. At so to drive the Z at high speed, I need to use full motor current. Normally for homing Z, I like to, or homing any axis, I like to drop the motor current just in case a switch fails or something. It's not gonna do, it will stall the motor then if the current is set low, rather than do a lot of damage. Um, but to move, Z at high speed because I'm using a single motor and three lead screws and then to use full motor current to get the torque that I need so that's why I use a second switch for the initial um, get it somewhere close homing so yeah so I've installed a, a slotted opto switch rather than me thing on a swinging arm so this is somewhat more elegant And then the third thing I've done, when I fitted the uh, Bontech LGX Ace Stroke Slice Engineering Mosquito Printhead thing onto the gantry and fitted the tool board behind, the nozzle isn't centred. Um, it's biased to one side. So when I initially fitted it, I had the motor on the left and the heater and the mister on the right. But the connectors on the tool board, which were bolted on the back, were the other way round. So the motors would have gone that way and a motor wiring would have had to go that way and the heater and thermistor that way. So, um, and it wasn't easy to change the tool board round because it would have stuck out one side because the holes are asymmetric on that. So I basically twiddled the LGX Ace round 180 degrees. So now the, the motor is on the same side as the motor connector on the tool board and the heater and thermistor on the same side as the heater and thermistor connectors on the tool board. So while I was making a new mount, um, I decided to just bolt the thing um, underneath. So the original one, I had two screws at the back and two at the top and two at the bottom, um, which meant if I needed to take the head off in any way. The only way to do it was to take out the hinge pin from the pivot mount, uh, which is a bit fiddly. So while I was redesigning it, I thought I'll just use two screws underneath, that'll be fine. Um, so there aren't any screws coming in the back of the print head now. So if I need to take it off, I can just undo the two bolts on the bottom and the whole assembly will come away. So I got the print head all assembled. Um, and all wired up. So here are some pictures. So everything is wired to the tool board. So I've got the fan, the motor, the um, heater, the temperature sensor, which I'm using a PT1000, the XN stop, and of course the Z end stop, which is the, the nozzle itself. So they're all connected to the tool board. So the only thing the tool board needs is power and data. So here's a couple of pictures of that. So for power I've used flexible um, silicon wire. And data is a uh, high-speed ADSL cable. The toolboard's got a bit of a strange um, connector, a little tiny 
um, JST Z8 or something or other. So what you have to do is cut the RJ11 plug off an ADSL cable and wire two connectors to the toolboard. So basically, yeah, all you, all you need on the toolboard then is uh, four conductors. So I could, I mean, I've got plenty of connectors on the main board. I uh, could have wired everything to the main board and not use the toolboard. Um, but then you end up with, you know, 15, 20 different conductors going to the printhead. But I've actually got a fifth um, conductor. Um, it's not 100% necessary, it's something I like to do. So I'll basically use a, a braided cable, a braided earth strap, just a very thin one. And I connect that to the, um, to the actual mount, to the carriage block. All part of my thing of bonding everything to... To, to ground as it were um, it's not 100% necessary on a tool board there is an earth path through the mounting screws through a resistor so any static build up in the print head will find its way to ground but only via the ground the the, the o cable coming in so I just like to run a separate one and the other thing that the braided thing does is that acts as a strain relief so I, I'm not using a cable chain on the top um, instead of that I've got this this kind of dolly that slides from front to back and I connect the cables to that so any front to back movement there will be a, a loop when it goes to the back it loops to the back um, so the only excess cable is what's needed from left to right <coughs> so the earth strap acts as a kind of a strain relief and I've cable tied the um, cables to the carriage itself so there's no movement on the actual connectors and then I put the whole thing in some uh, nylon cable braid just to keep it neat so that dolly is kind of offset um, from the center line so the filament will come in at the top in the center and this dolly is the cables uh, to the to the right of that so hopefully the wires won't get tangled up with the printer that's the plan so I finished the wiring on the draw, that's all done. As you can see, there's, uh, there's not all that much connected to the to the main board. So a, a, a Duet 6HC is a bit of an overkill for this printer, but it's what I had, it was carried over from the other one. And then on the um, base plate that covers it all up, I've um, dropped that down and put it roughly, uh, put it where it's gonna be on its four little mounting pillars. So um, that covers up all the the belts for the Z and all the electronics and that that are in the drawer underneath. Um, still left the protective film on it for now so it doesn't get scratched. And I made a face of your plate at the top. So I'm trying to keep the printer as clean as possible. I don't really want a lot of switches and knobs and things visible. Um, but I do want to have an emergency stop. It's something that's saved my bacon a few times. Um, but that's not um, as simple as as you think once you've got an uninterruptible power supply because you interrupt the power supply and the UPS cuts in and keeps everything live so my emergency stop doesn't cut all power um, I would need a sort of a multi-pole emergency swap stop to cut the batteries as well as the, the mains power and everything else so it basically cuts the 24 volts to both boards so I ran a cable from the 24 volt supply up to the emergency stop. It's a two pole um, switch. So I bridged across to the second pole and then I'll run one cable from the emergency stop down to the duet board in the drawer. And the other cable is the one that goes around the top to the tool board. So hitting emergency stop cuts all power to, the, to both boards. So it will stop all the motors, it will stop any fans, it will stop any heaters that are connected to the fan. It will also, even though the mains heater is, the, the bed heater is mains, it's controlled by an SSR from the duet board. So that will turn off providing the SSR hasn't gone faulty. Um, killing the emergency stop will kill the power on the bed heater. And then before I put the, um, the cover plate on the bottom, um, I, I ran um, basically a 12 volt, an O volt and a 5 volt up to the top of the printer um, for use with other bits and bobs, um, specifically lights that I'm probably end up fitting something. 
Um, if I put panels on this thing, it's going to need lights. I've, I've ran the 5 volts as well, so that if I end up with an ASP32 in the top, which would probably be a better place than in the drawer at the bottom, because the, the uh, one I'd likely use would be a Wi-Fi one. Um, and buried inside the drawer surrounded by metal and electronics it probably wouldn't get a very good Wi-Fi signal but it might work better in the top and I could always use an external aerial Wi-Fi area if I needed to. It was just easier to run those cables before I um, fitted the base plate. The base plates just held on with four um, wing, wing nuts so I can easily lift it up again. So that's about it, that's about as far as we've got so far. I've put power on and I've checked everything so all the end stops um, show triggered when they're triggered and not triggered when they're not triggered so that's good and that includes the additional ones, the, the Y Max and the the second Z, the slotted opto, that's all working. Um, I had a little problem with communication, can communication, so the two wires I've put on the tool board have got them the wrong way around. I had to change them around but other than that um, that's all working I haven't put the belts on it yet but the motors um, turn as they should um, not necessarily in the right direction but that's to come but they do turn the Z axis does go up and down um, I can heat the hot end I can heat the bed so temperature sensors are working heaters are all working so I've got a lot of configuring to do because the configuration was for a Core XY UV with six extruder motors. So I've got to change all my configuration files and uh, all the homing macros as well because I'm only homing X and Y and not U and V. Tune the heater and um, do all those sorts of things. Oh, and obviously get some filament in. So I've got a, a plate that's going to go on the top with rollers and things that will hold the filament so that will probably be the next thing I'll fit um, I might do some commissioning first and then fit that and then ongoing there'll be things like panels and lights and a, and a drawer front so I've got brackets there but not a front and a handle um, <laughs> but they're kind of ongoing things for the future and whatever I use to control the lights and, and other bits and bobs but anyway Making good progress. I'm going to have to take a break for a few days. Um, so the next video might be a little, uh, a couple of weeks rather than a week. But um, so anyway, hope you found something useful in that or whatever. Until next time. Thanks for watching.